quick these weeks go. And here it is. We are in the month of May. We are glad that you are worshiping with us. So we welcome you to worship. If you're new to us, we invite you to visit our website, icdisciples.org. Uh, or even if you've been with us before, you can always visit there and learn more. If we don't know you're out there, there's a button to click for a connection card that allows you to share your information and to let us know that you're worshiping with us. A few things. Uh, these are those reminders I do each week. If lighting a candle is an act that brings meaning to you into your worship space, and if you have one there at home, I would encourage you to get that. Then also we will share communion later, and so please have something to take as the bread and something as the cup. They can be traditional elements or they can be something very different, whatever is meaningful to you. So as we start worship, we do light our candle. We do this as a reminder of the divine presence always with us. And I invite you now to sing together we are beginning with the hymn, God is here. The words will be on your screen. Let us worship God together. Thank you. 
pray with me. God of love, we come here this morning in gratitude for this day, for this world that you have made, for the people in our church community and beyond. We thank you for all the gifts you offer us, and we thank you for your love and your continuing presence in our lives. God, we confess that we have not always lived that love in our world. We have at times succumbed to anger, to selfishness, to pride, and to narrow-mindedness. We have done things that cause harm to others and have left undone things that would bring comfort and hope. God, forgive us for all that we have done and left undone. Remind us always that we are part of all that is around us and that you call us to be your love in this world. We pray that you will guide us and that we will always remember to look to you for that guidance. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who showed us your love. Amen. We are in the period of time the church calls the Easter season or Eastertide. It is that time when we remember the early disciples living between Jesus' resurrection and the coming of the spirit of Pentecost. Today, we are reminded, as they were, that there is no time when we are disconnected from God because love is at the heart of what connects us. We are reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Let us listen to a word from God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of the truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will abide in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me but you will see me because I live, you also will live. And that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. May God's blessing be added to the hearing of this word. In the scripture reading we just heard, the very first verse reads, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now that's Jesus talking, and he's saying to keep his commandments. Do you wonder what commandment Jesus is talking about? Well, if we look back to the previous chapter, if we look at John chapter 13, Jesus says in here, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. Now, love is super important, and it's not always easy to love our neighbor. So I thought today we would learn a song. Uh, this song is called Share a Little Bit of Your Love. It's by Ray Rep. And um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of sign language during the song. You are welcome to sing along or to sign along. Um, some of the signs I'll be using are this is share. Uh, this is love, which you may already know. I'll also be doing grow, help, and then shine. So uh, feel free to uh, join in with, with any of those. Share a little bit of your love, my friends. Share a little bit of your love. Share a little bit of our love, my friends, and it'll come back to where it began. Share a little bit of your love, my friends. Share a little bit of your love. Share a little bit of your love, my friends, and it'll come back to where it began. And watch it grow. Watch it grow, watch it grow to where it touches every land. Help it grow, help it 
Reaching out to someone your hand Share a little bit of your love, my friends Share a little bit of your love Share a little bit of your love, my friends And it'll come back to where it began Share a little bit of your love, my friends Share a little bit of your love Share a little bit of your love, my friends In 2007, a book by William Paul Young was published. It was titled The Shack. This book tells the story of Mac, who after unimaginable tragedy, had an encounter with God who showed up literally in three persons. While we might call this the Trinity, Mac knew them as Papa, described in the book as a big black woman with a questionable sense of humor. Sarayu, who seemed almost to shimmer in the light and her hair blew in all directions, even though there was hardly a breeze. And Jesus, who appeared Middle Eastern and was dressed like a laborer. In one scene, Mac had gone to wash up for dinner when he heard a crash come from the kitchen. Young writes this. For a moment, there was dead silence. And then, unexpectedly, Mac heard uproarious laughter. Curious, he exited the bathroom and poked his head through the doorway of the kitchen. Mac was shocked by the scene in front of him. It appeared Jesus had dropped a large bowl of some sort of batter or sauce on the floor, and it was everywhere. It must have landed close to Papa because the lower portion of her skirt and bare feet were covered in the gooey mess. All three were laughing so hard that Mac didn't think they were breathing. Sarayu said something about humans being clumsy, and all three started roaring again. Finally, Jesus brushed past Mac and returned a minute later with a large basin of water and towels. Sarayu was already wiping the goop from the floor and cupboards. But Jesus went straight to Papa and kneeling at her feet, began to wipe off the front of her clothes. He worked down to her feet and gently lifted one foot at a time, which he directed into the basin where he cleaned and massaged it. As he leaned against the doorway watching, Mac's mind was full of thoughts. So this was God in relationship? It was beautiful and so appealing. He knew it didn't matter whose fault it was. The mess from some bowl that had been broken 
that dish that had been planned simply would not be shared. Obviously, what was truly important here was the love they had for one another and the fullness it brought them. Mac shook his head. How different this was from the way he treated the ones he loved. Oh, how often we struggle to really grasp what love is, what possibilities live within love. How often we are so quick to wonder who is in charge or who should be excluded rather than seeking all of the possibilities of what love can be. That sense of hierarchy and even exclusion is certainly how we often hear this passage from John used today. Too often we have been trained to listen for and even to fear phrases about obedience. Too often we have been taught that when Jesus says, those who love me will be loved by my Father, we've been taught that that means that if we're included, we're part of an exclusive group that leaves others outside of God's love. But friends, do you know what the context is for this passage here in the Gospel of John? Do you remember? This isn't some sermon. Jesus is preaching to a various group of strangers on a hillside somewhere. Rather, these are words shared within intimate relationships between Jesus and his disciples. Not only that, but they are words shared in the last week of his life. Jesus is not forcing obedience. He is not threatening them with what happens if they don't love him. Rather, as he anticipates the reality of his own death, he is reminding them of his love and promising them that they won't be alone. The relationship here, it's already established. Jesus is speaking to people who know him and who love him, to people who he knows and who he loves, people who, in spite of their imperfections, really are doing their best to live in his ways. He is speaking to them, knowing that he won't be with them forever. In fact, at this point in the story, he won't even be with them in a few days. And yet he wants them to know that he will never really leave them. Isn't that the power of love? So often when I'm presiding at a funeral service, I remind people that even though their loved one is no longer physically present, they will always be a part of them. I remind them that their loved one will keep showing up in the ways they live out that person's legacy. And in a sense, that's what Jesus is doing here and meanwhile, it is even bigger. As Jesus says, not only will they have the memory of him, but his presence will remain with them. In the many manifestations of the divine, Jesus will keep showing up for them and with them, in them and through them. Here in this reading, love and keeping commandments and the presence of God, they are all entangled. We sometimes want to separate them. We want to put each of them in their own little box with a clear definition, but the reality is they are in fact entangled. When Jesus reminds his followers to keep his commandments, what is he speaking of? 
Some of us talked about this last Sunday in faith formation. When asked what law, what commandment was most important, do you remember what Jesus said? The answer came easy. It was love. Love of God, love of neighbor. When we obey God, we don't adhere carefully to arbitrary rules, but when we obey God, we love. When we keep Jesus' commandments, we create a better world for everyone. And when we do this, we not only engage more fully in relationships with other people, but we engage more fully in relationship with the divine. And that is the invitation. It was the invitation to Jesus' followers as he was about to depart, as he was promising that the divine presence would never leave them. And it is the invitation to us today as we are reminded that God is love and that we are always invited into and desired in God's circle of love. Again, quoting from the book, The Shack. Mac, said Papa, with an intensity that caused him to listen very carefully, we want to share with you the love and joy and freedom and light that we already know within ourselves. We created you the human, to be in face-to-face -face relationship with us, to join our circle of love. Friends, I wonder how we would function differently in the world, in all our relationships, if we understood love and joy and freedom, not hierarchy and rules and control to be vital to everything we do, to how we relate to God and to how we relate to one another. I wonder how our world would be different if we could embrace the reality of the divine presence always with us, calling us to fuller living and to deeper loving. In describing a vision she had in 1373, Julian of Norwich wrote of a little thing she saw lying in the palm of her hand. After other wonderings, Julian writes this, In this little thing I saw three properties. The first is that God made it. The second that God loves it, the third, that God keeps it. Friends, the same is true of us. God made us. God loves us. God keeps us. I wonder what the world would be like if we embrace that truth in ourselves and in each one. I wonder what the world would be like if we were to truly join in God's circle of love. Nancy J. Ramsey wrote this, The love Jesus wants his hearers to embrace is not an abstract philosophical concept, but the lived reality revealed in the life, relationships, and actions of a simple Nazarene who looks and talks like them and simply lives among them. This is the reality of stewardship, living our lives in the ways of Jesus, giving ourselves 
in a fashion that imitates Jesus' generosity, being ready to share what we have in a way that makes a difference for others. We are grateful for the ways that you participate in and support the ministry that we share together at First Christian. If one of those ways happens to be through financial giving, you are welcome to mail those gifts to the address on the screen or to use the donate button at the website. But in all that we do, in the ways that we live our lives, may we do so generously. As we prepare for communion, I invite you, if you haven't already, to gather the elements that you will receive today. We have significant conversations and interactions around the table, whether in a restaurant, with a friend, in a break room, with a colleague, at our grandparents' dining table, with our family, Food is often what slows us down and brings us together. At the table, we celebrate milestones. At the table, we share our hopes and our dreams. At the table, we remember our loved ones. At the table, we look together toward the future. At the table, as we pass food, as we fill our bellies, we help each other become more fully who we are created to be. At this table, we do the same. Here we remember who Jesus was. Here we catch a vision for who we are called to be. Here we dream about who we are becoming. Here we slow down and take a moment to embrace the possibilities within us 
and among us. So we come and we remember that Jesus gathered at the table and there he took bread and having blessed it, he broke it and he gave it to his friends saying, take and eat of this, each of you, for this is my body. And so when we eat of the bread, we offer our bodies for Jesus' continued work in this world. Likewise, after the meal, Jesus took the cup and he passed it to them saying, this cup is a new covenant. And because we understand it to be a covenant of love, when we drink of the cup, we invite God's loving spirit to flow through us. I invite you now to share in this meal. Please pray with me. Lord, as believers, we're connected to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave us the commandment to love one another. He taught us to openly welcome, accept, and support everyone we encounter. As we leave the table today, help us to remember that as a community of believers working together, our ties, our beliefs, and our love for one another will grow in strength and peace for the good of all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
go with the confidence that you do not go alone. You go in the presence of God as one who is always loved. You go to be that presence for others and to share God's love with the world. Amen.